Hey kids, Tavi Rider here. I have some more Minecraft science for you, this time on the topic of spawners. With the addition of enchantments to the game, experience levels become very valuable because you can spend those experience levels to enchant your weapons and armor. Now, this can be very difficult because it takes a lot of work to get a high experience level, and even then you may not get a very good enchantment in the end. You may get Bane of Arthropods 1 or something. Uh, so a very good way to deal with those problems is by building an XP grinder and that usually involves one of these spawners. In this video I'm going to show you some of the properties of spawners so that you know how to design a good XP grinder. So here we have a display showing some of the important ranges around a spawner. In the very middle we have a zombie spawner and this glass room shows the area within which zombies will spawn. The way the spawner works is the miniature zombie in the middle spins faster and faster and when it reaches top speed, which takes 10 to 40 seconds, there's a poof and a zombie appears. Hello. Uh, and this glass box shows all the places where the zombies can appear. Um, the area is 4 high and 8 wide and long. Uh, it's not exactly centered. I'll show you more about that in a minute. And let me show you how I determined this. Uh, the experiment for determining the heights at which they appear was actually pretty straightforward. I just built a box like this and then put down a floor of obsidian and saw whether they would spawn or not. And I just kept filling it up until they wouldn't spawn anymore. And if I filled up to this height, they would not spawn anymore. So the highest height at which they will spawn is standing on... Whoops standing on the obsidian where you see them now, which gives just barely enough room for their head in the top there. So that's the highest height, and then I just built, I just lowered that floor until when they spawned, they didn't fall anymore, and that was at this height. So the height is easy. It is their feet will spawn at the altitude of the spawner, or one higher or one lower, and that's it. Now, where they would appear horizontally, that was a much more difficult experiment, and I want to show you how I did that. We'll teleport over to my horizontal testing rig. Right now I have the lights on. The, you do need to have the area dark for the spawner to be able to spawn monsters. You can see that this one is already spinning at the maximum speed, but nothing is happening because there's no valid place for it to spawn any monsters. I built all of these pillars of different heights so that when a monster spawns it will drop on the pillar and then see in all directions there's either too tall of a jump up or too far of a fall down so the zombie will simply stay where he is. So let me uh, change this to obsidian to turn out the lights. And you can see immediately the moment the lights went out something spawned. And this zombie appeared right here, and he's just barely on this ledge, so we'll count that as being on that ledge. Let me kill him off here. And then I filled in that column where he appeared with obsidian. Here's another one over here. Let me just turn on instant kill to make this a little easier. There we go. And so fill in another column, and keep repeating this until every single spot where a zombie appears has filled and then no more zombies will be able to spawn. So this took a bit of time but I eventually filled in the entire area and here's what I ended up with. Turn the lights back on. So this is where the spawner is and towards the north four blocks and towards the west four blocks was the distance where they would spawn, but to the south and to the east it was only three blocks. So it seems kind of off-center. What you have to do is think of the center of it as being one of the corners of the spawner. Now I don't know if this is sensitive to which quadrant of the world you're in. Uh, currently I'm at negative 490 and positive 213 X and Z. Um, Maybe this would be different in the different quadrants. I didn't bother testing because it's kind of a difficult thing to deal with when you're deep underground. So I simply assume in anything that I do that it is four blocks in each direction away from the mob spawner. And that's also a roughly the size of the dungeon that the terrain generator will build around a spawner. So that not, that's not a big deal anyway. So that's how you determine where they appear horizontally. And it was easy to test where they appear vertically. So we now know where they will appear. And let's go back to our sample. 
Um, now the next thing is that there is actually something it does to make sure that the spawner does not simply flood the entire world with zombies. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to spawn some right here using single player commands. We'll spawn five of them. Okay, we got one in the cup here. We'll clone him five more times. So we have six zombies in this little cup here. Uh, let's take care of these two guys. <laughs> Burned to death. Okay. So we have six zombies safe in their little cup. If we look in here... Well, you can see that it stopped spinning. It must have tried to spawn some, but it didn't succeed. There's no zombies in here. And that's because the spawner checks in a range around itself how many zombies are nearby. It doesn't care about skeletons or spiders or anything else. It only cares about zombies. But if there's too many zombies nearby, you're going to see this happen. It spins up. Poof. And nothing appears. So that's sort of a wasted opportunity for spawning more zombies. Now the number is six, because if I kill off just one of those zombies... Oops. And then go back in here. We'll wait for this to spin up again, and you'll see that this time we actually get a zombie to spawn. And there he is. So the critical number is six. If they have six of the monster that they care about, or that they spawn, within range, then they will not spawn. Uh, now, what is that range? Well, if I spawn five more zombies, we'll clone you. And we have six zombies out in this farther cup. Didn't survive the fall there. Ooh, let me kill off these guys. My favorite way is with splash potions of healing. And we'll get rid of this gentleman who's in here. So, now we have the farther cup full of six zombies, and you can see that one still spawned in here. So, those zombies in the farther cup were too far away for the spawner to care about them. And so I read the uh, Minecraft wiki page about spawners, and it says that the range is eight blocks in each horizontal direction. So that's exactly how many blocks I have here on the obsidian. This is eight blocks out from the spawner, horizontally in any direction, and f four blocks vertically. So one, two, three, and four. So if the zombies were in this area, if they were standing on top of this building, you would not have any more zombies spawning by that spawner. Now, I did not exhaustively test this because it would be very difficult to make cups everywhere and test over and over again waiting for it to spawn every time. But I have done a lot of spot checks in different places on all sides and it seems like that wiki article is correct. So that's the rate limiter. There's one other thing that affects the spawner's behavior and that is where the player is. So let me kill off all the zombies and then stand just over here. I'm going to stand on this glowstone. You can see nothing is happening here. We'll fast forward the video for a minute just so you can see that no matter how long we wait, no zombies spawn. So that was about 40 seconds of waiting and still nothing appeared in there. So let's step a little closer and wait a little while and already we have a zombie spawning. So there is a range that the player has to be inside of for the spawner to spawn any more zombies. And I arranged these red bars uh, around the spawner in all directions. Uh, they are 16 blocks long centered on the spawner. But this is not actually a rectangle and I was able to test this as well. It's a sphere around the spawner. So we destroy the spawner and then use a world edit command. Create a horizontal sphere out of glass centered on my feet 16 blocks in radius. And that sphere there is the area where the player must be for a spawner at the center to still generate zombies. So you can see the block that I was standing on that glowstone is just outside of the glass sphere. But one step inside, if I'm in the walls of this glass sphere, then I'm close enough and the spawner will start spawning monsters. 
So again, this I got that number from the wiki article, but I'm pretty sure it's correct from the testing that I've done in all different quadrants and so on. So this, when you think about what this implies for making an XP grinder, what you have to do is get the monsters from the spawner to outside this obsidian area as quickly as possible so that the spawner can spawn again. But then you can't get them, you don't want to push them all the way outside of this sphere because the player is going to be out there getting ready to kill the monsters and the spawner will stop spawning. So this red zone is a sweet spot that you have to get the monsters to as smoothly, as quickly as possible so that they will keep spawning at as high a rate as possible so that you can maximize the amount of experience you get. Uh, now my next video will show off an exact design for a mob spawner uh, and an XP grinder that I built based upon all this science. So we'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.